Hey everybody, welcome to the first edition of the Flow Track Podcast. I'm Kevin Sully, joined in this very, very warm booth by Gordon Mack. We're going to be here for an hour, Gordon. Yes, long sleeve shirts, probably the, not the good idea, but you know, I'm here for it. I'm here in the long, long haul. We'll see if we can pull off this podcast in this hot box. Yes, this is good. And we are coming to you guys on a week where there's a lot going on in track and field. USA's just wrapped, NCAA's is heating up. Joshua Chapter guy ran 12.51 on the roads. So probably not going to get to all of it today. We're going to pace ourselves yes. on this episode, on this podcast in general. But Lincoln and I were in Albuquerque. You weren't there. So I'm just curious from afar, what was the what was the biggest story for you? So the biggest story for me was kind of like the non-story story was, for me, you knew that Shelby was going to be there and, you know, uh, Paul Salimo. But I was kind of surprised. Like thought, thinking about all the people who didn't show up. Grant Holloway runs 7:38 in Clemson in a in a hurdle race. Ronnie Baker runs 6:50 over in Europe. Uh, obviously, some top 400 meter runners weren't there. So I was kind of thinking about it, it was the anti USA championship in my opinion because there's a lot of people who didn't show up. Matthew Sentowitz was literally in Albuquerque mm-hmm. but didn't even run. Yeah. What are your thoughts on all the scratches? I mean, we talked to Matthew Sentowitz. I mean, he he's banged up. Um, or he was banged up in the winter. He's been banged up before, so nothing too surprising. I don't know, was this different than previous years? Maybe yeah. I've just, I, I, I'm just accustomed to not that many people yeah. show up. I know we were talking about this a month or two ago, and you're like, oh, so-and-so is going to run, so-and-so is going to run. I was like, I don't know about yeah. that. I was surprised Coleman came. So at this point in my track fandom, I'm just happy when anybody shows up yeah. to endorse. What was surprising a little bit was that the people who were, like, on the list that we thought were going to run, even after, and then ended up scratching, right? Like, I get it if you're not planning on doing indoors at all. Like, I get Noah Lyles is not going to run indoors. It makes perfect sense. I get Michael Norman's not going to run indoors. I get Why does that make sense that Michael Norman doesn't run indoors? Well, because the 400 indoors is just nuts. I mean, look at the 400. Because Lyles, you could, you could argue there's no 200 indoors, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's not a 60 guy, so yeah. you could say. But, like, it's kind of ridiculous that he could run the 400 indoors – in college, yeah. why can't he do it as a pro? Well, how much must the indoor 400 suck that everybody does it in college a million times and the moment they turn pro, nobody does it, yeah. right? I mean, Merritt barely did it. Van Niekerk's never done it. I mean, it's just not a thing that people do. I don't think they want to put themselves through the ringer. But, like, the people that scratched, that were like, the women's eight was pretty good, all things considered. Like, the top six from last year's outdoor final were entered. But Raven did, was Raven it? scratched, right. That's what I'm saying. The, the men's high hurdles was already, I don't know, low hurdles indoors, was already, like, weak. And then Robert's scratches, those ones were the ones where yeah. I was like, okay, well, wait. You plan on doing it, and then you waited. Because I get it. Oh, like, the world indoors gets canceled. You're going to bail, like, That's their before. excuse. But, like, no, but we, we already knew that they weren't running, right? Like, we, sorry, we, we already knew that the meet was canceled, like, last week or a couple weeks ago. But then they still entered, and then they scratched. Like, imagine if Grant Holloway was like, I'm going to run the 100-meter dash at USA's. Everyone yeah. would be like, what? That doesn't make any sense, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, And that's what happened on the women's side. Brianna McNeil runs the 60. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she didn't run the hurdles. Like I don't, yeah, and that's weird. Like, the hurdles usually is where everybody shows up, yeah. right? Like, that's Kenny Harrison was... Ran out. Yeah, it's not like they're like, oh, I'm injured. They're like literally running somewhere else in the country. Yeah, happened on this like Lopez Lemong runs at the. We'll get to that later, but runs yeah. the Husky. Like Bowerman, half their team ran at the Husky, and the other half ran at USA's. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's the reasoning for that? It's like you can like if they're healthy. This like what's going they, on? They go and do it. Yeah, I guess the distance people you could chalk it up to not wanting to run at altitude. No, it's uh, I don't want to lose. Is that what it is? Yeah. But then, I mean, if you're going to lose, though, wouldn't you rather lose at USA's against, like, solid competition than you're going to these side meets and, and losing to... But they're not losing. I mean, well, it, I guess, the Husky yeah. Classic was a glorified Bowerman Time appreciation yeah. meet. But it is interesting. <laughs> no, but then all the women, though, show up at Frindor's. Yeah. And then they made that a glorified Bowerman appreciation meet because they completely dominated everybody as expected. I don't know. I guess, like I said, I, I'm just used to them not people not sh- showing up. And that's probably a bad thing. That means I'm probably, I've been around too long yeah. and my expectations are so low. Um, we should not have professional indoor track and field. Is that the solution? Yeah, there is no point. Yeah. The top stars in the world don't do it. It's a collegiate event. It's yeah. a collegiate sport. You yeah. know, I'm trying to think of an analogy. Like, you don't see NFL players playing college football. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... They- <laughs> <laughs> they, they play NFL football, right. so we shouldn't see pros doing college track. So just so have, like, no circuit at all, or just don't do things like USA's and Worlds? 
don't do USA Sing Worlds. You can do, like, invitational stuff because it's, like, fun to see people. Yeah. But no, like, giving people titles. Like, you should not be winning a title in indoor yeah. as a professional. Yeah. No, I get that. I mean, and a lot of people were chalking up to, like, well, the World Indoors is canceled. This loss yeah. meeting. And I was like, even if there was World Indoors. You weren't going to do it. The, the big shot. Uh, at least on the U.S. side of things, for, like, indoors to take off or indoors to get going again was Portland 2016. Yeah. They hosted it there. And that meet was pretty good. And yeah, because they were like, hey, it's cool. We're at home. Right. And we don't have to travel very far. We don't, you know, we, we can do sponsor stuff and gold medals and gold medals. So then you saw some cool races from that. But that was sort of the apex, Gordon. And that was 2016, and now we're in 2020. Like, we're four years gone from that. I don't think that there's any... I know back in the day people would say, oh, in the 70s, like... 15,000 people showed up to see Pre run a mile at the LA Forum. Like People just, say that? Because it happened. I mean, it like legitimately, like they filled these basketball stadiums with huge crowds. I guess no one had nothing to, anything to do in the 70s. I don't know what happened, um, but that's like not where the sport's at yeah. right now. And people are just, any opportunity they have to not race, they seem to take. Yeah. I mean, you saw like uh, years ago when the whole... Legat Rupp were kind of breaking each other's records. They would that was, always that was cool. They would always dodge each other too, though. Yeah, yeah. They'd yeah. be like, "Oh, why would I race Rupp or why would I race Legat?" And like, they one runs an off event, and like, they didn't. No one wanted to race each other because we live in a world where the sport is the only thing that matters is the outdoor national championship and the outdoor global championship. Yeah, no, that's hundred percent right. A couple of years ago, though, Rupp and Legat would race at this meet. I remember Albuquerque hosted some pretty cool like Rupp versus Legat battles, but that was. I mean, Legat lived in Tucson, so it was a pretty close trip, and he always liked to compete at U.S. championships. And I think Rupp was just kind of coming up in his yeah. career. So you're trying to establish your name, you're going to want to run I just remember, I remember an interview where Legat said, why would I ever race? Why, would, why am I incentivized to race Rupp yeah. in the regular season? He I'm, said something like that at Milrose or something a few years ago. I mean, he's right, though, right? Yeah. From, like, a market perspective, like, if you're looking at this solely as, like, how do you maximize uh, your time in the sport? and your earnings in the sport, like, it makes sense. There's and that's no... why I think Ronnie Baker and Noah Lyles are like, screw U.S. indoors. I'm not going to race Christian Coleman Yeah. at altitude. Yeah. Where he runs, like, sub-640 backwards. I see. Did you see a start? It was awful. He didn't, and he ran 637. <sighs> I So the first time I saw it, like, when I saw it live, I was like, oh, maybe the guy next to him just got a yeah. good start, and it played tricks on me. No. He got left by a lot of people. He, he, he had trouble to start all weekend. So in the, in the opening round... He said they called him out real quick, and if you watch, he called, called him out to the track real quick. Yeah. If you watch that race, he's literally doing the counting off of the blocks, like like getting his blocks set, like when they called them down to set position, he was still messing with his blocks. Oh, wow. And his start wasn't, it, it wasn't as as obviously slower than anybody else in that one, and maybe it was just because it was a first round. Uh, semis, I don't know, was his, I don't even remember. It, it didn't seem particularly good or bad, it was just okay. And then, yeah, the last one, his, I saw his coach tweeted, like, oh, yeah, we're going to fix that start and get even better. I mean, to run 637 like that, I mean, the start is, like, 90% of a 60 is, like, a start. That's it. I mean, we all knew Christian Coleman was going to win, but if you look at the internet, the yeah. big reaction wasn't Coleman win, was the guy who got second. Uh, Marvin Bracey ran si sub 650. Yeah. I did not see that coming. Well, and the U.S. 100 team, I mean... I always do this, especially with Marvin Brace. Yeah. I get super excited by, by indoor performances. I know it's been a while, but, like, going back to, you know, a few years ago, he was always a stud. Yeah. 60 indoors. But maybe – because you got cause you got Coleman and Lyles there too, right? And then you have a third spot where it's, like, it's Gatlin. Rogers, Gatlin, th those type of guys. M maybe Ronnie Baker works his way in there. Yeah. But there's, like, space for somebody like Bracey. Well, he, when's the last time he's run, like, professionally? That's a good question. Because he quit, right? Or did he just, like, I'm going to be – he thought he was going to be an NFL player Is that for, like, a hot minute? Yeah. yeah, I think he like tried out for the Carolina Panthers. I could be wrong. Tough gig to get. Let me look up Bracey here. But yeah, he did like a whole like I'm a pro, pro football player. Oh yeah, well he's, I... he's done a bunch of me. So yeah, he hasn't run since 2017. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that. So he took two years whole off. Yeah. And what did he even run in 2017? Did he do? He only did one race in 2017. He ran 100 in 10:39. A couple four by ones and a four by. Four. So really, the Olympic year was his last like going going at it. Yeah. Well, that was the year when he won. He got oh, he got seventh. He got he won U.S. indoors. U.S. indoors. But he ran sub ten twice, so he went. He got third. Got third at the trials. Yeah. So like, hmm. he's he's gonna be the one to watch because he's he's guys like a no resume right now. Like his resume is something from that doesn't count anymore. Nine ninety three in twenty fifteen. Yeah. Wow. 
You're saying I should have, we should have interviewed him. Yes, that's what I was saying. I was kind of refreshing the feed and I didn't (laughs) see it. And I was like, we sent two of you guys there. It is chaotic. You know how it is there. What what was the, what's like a, what you don't know about covering that meat that people should know? Uh, well, to get to the Chalimo thing. Yeah. Everybody saw the clip. The question that precipitated it, my question was very innocent. I don't want to get accused of being TMZ. I literally asked, go back, look at the tape. I literally asked, so are you excited to race Lopez this year? Gave him the opportunity. Now, Chalimo then replied with, you know, kind of saying he had a lucky year last year when he beat him. Uh, all L- this comes lucky down to, is a... Well, all this comes down to one race, which is crazy, yeah. right? It's just, we're just talking. This whole thing started, apparently, at USA's last year. And then he said... Uh, well, the, the exact quote was something like, bring it on this year, right? Chalimo is good in the mix zone because Chalimo knows, he's like a comedian. Yeah. He knows when he's hit his high point and then he literally will just walk off. He did that at Worlds and he did that in that one too because he didn't even like wait for me to ask another question. He says, bring it on. And then he like smiles and then just goes. Now, what people don't know, you want some inside info? Yes. They did a post-race workout, him and Hillary Bohr, and they were out there doing 400s for a very long time. <laughs> Uh, at least six. This is after the 15? After the 3,000. Uh, 3, he, yeah. he didn't come back yeah, yeah. the next day. He only ran the 3,000. They did at least six. Uh, I got split on one that was under 60, but I was listening to the coach, and they were pretty much all under 60. I believe, don't quote me on this, we'll have to ask Lincoln. I'm not reporting this. 56-8 on the last one. Doing he, six? H- at least six. Hillary had stopped by that point. The last couple were... Chalimo. What was a recovery? Are you noticing? Uh, I think they jogged 200. Oh, I mean, wow. I mean it, was, it was a slow jog around, yeah. but they were going. They were moving, and they were all, again, they were all were un, at 60 or under is what it looked like. So, But then he goes on Instagram. And that's <laughs> this is the I, best part. He had a great clap I mean, back to Lopez. I mean, let's start at the beginning. So he, he says his quote, right, calls, out, calls out Lopez with uh, saying, you know, it's going to be, what, what was it? Uh, Directly, he said it's going to be harder. Last year was my down year, so he can brag about this. And then yeah. eventually he goes, but this is, but this year, you know, he can bring it on. Lopez then records the, the flow track Instagram clip of it, which is awesome. Screen record. Screen it's record. like a crop screen recording. I know, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good screen recording here. Uh, then he, Lamont captions it with, the dog who barks the loudest is not the most vicious. Hashtag Lamont Strong. Hashtag Chihuahua. Lamont Strong. That's a, that's a... Hashtag that people have been... I mean, like, it rhymes, so it's okay, good. Okay, Lamont Strong, yeah. So, so at this point, you're like, okay, calls Chilimo a Chihuahua. He does hashtag Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Or exactly. Like I mean, Chihuahua. it makes sense, cause, and it's a play on ch Limo and Chihuahua. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Chilimo Chihuahua. That's good. Were you yeah. consulting in this? Uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, so then we go a little bit later, and we have Chilimo respond with this awesome Photoshop here. I mean, did he do this? No, I think... I think that's probably found. He probably found it on the internet. Really? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. I'm sure he googled like lion. <laughs> or maybe no, maybe he did. I mean, Photoshop it looks that. pretty good. Dogs compete at husky invites. Lions compete at championships. Quote: Only a lion can recognize a lion roar. Hashtag Lamong scared. And he ats him, and then he says <laughs> hashtag Chihuahua. <laughs> Chihuahua. Okay. At this point, what are you thinking? Well, I'm just thinking the the play on. Getting called a dog and then throwing it back in his face for running at a college meet named after a dog, which I thought was very yeah polite. husky yeah the yeah. husky the husky invite because he has a point. I mean, Lopez is going to talk like call him out, but meanwhile he didn't even show up like yeah. and like what was so, this? so then we a, get this one last night. This is the last the last chapter for now for now. Uh, so we got a picture of a chihuahua, which I Google image chihuahua. To see if this was like the first one that yeah. came up, it wasn't on my first. Oh, page. so he, he dove deep. He dug a little bit to he find. He went to that third or fourth page. A specific yeah, chihuahua. Yeah. Uh, hand me a leash. I'm gonna walk this dog. <laughs> Hashtag Lamong Strong again. And then Chalimo responded in the comments. So no new posts at this point. Chalimo goes in the comments. I give up, but before I do, go get a global medal. Oh. Or at least get top three in a diamond league. Then we can talk, homie. Oh. As for now, I dropped the mic. We are not in the same league. All caps, period, and then a bunch of exclamation Starting marks. Starting to talk about his resume. Lamong responded to that, something I assume is in Swahili, and I asked somebody to get a translation, so maybe by the end of the show we'll get a translation. Uh, but then he said, yes, 
you are right, quote, I am not in your league. So I don't know what that, I, we need to figure out what the... I think he's probably saying something where, like, I beat you multiple times. Yeah, you're right, I'm not in your league because I'm better than you is probably what he was saying. Okay. So where are we at on this beef? Lincoln had a good point. He said everybody's going to try to score, or try to score this and say who, who's winning, and the answer is everybody. We're all winners. Oh, yeah, we're all winners. The, the real question is, is it real? Yeah. Is the beef real or is the beef performative? Okay, so I got, I got a translation, but okay. this is via Google Translate. Wash your mouth, please, boy. Watch your mouth, please, boy? Wash your mouth. Oh, wash your mouth. But maybe it's watch your mouth. Wash. No, wash it because he's talking yeah. shit. S, yeah. S, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is this real or do you think this is like a coordinated behind the back? Uh, well, I remember, I think it was on Chavez's pod, Woody Kincaid and Lamong. Or maybe it's Woody Kincaid when he's on Chavez's pod. He said last year with the beef after USA's, like they were just bored at altitude camp. So yeah. like if you go back to last year's when the whole thing started, like they're like in Chilimo's comments. Like him and like Woody Kincaid are going back and forth like in the comments. So I think they're just bored. And it, e- either way, it's awesome. Right? Yeah. I, mean, either way, it's I don't think it's real. No? I think they respect each other. They're both great. Right? Yeah. I mean, they're both like awesome to interview and they're both. I think it's like they both want to win, but they I don't think they think, you know. Do you think they're texting on the side? Yeah. They, no. Like, yeah, no. They're like, hey, do you like this picture? I don't know. I mean, I think what's going to happen, this is, why, this is the best case scenario. The best case scenario is Lopez, is Chilimo beats, Lo, beats Lopez or Lopez doesn't make it in the five. Yeah. And Chilimo medals for the U.S., in the five, mm-hmm. and then Lopez goes on a medal for the U.S. in the 10K, Yeah, and then they both have medals, and they're both really proud of each other. And they both have big hugs. The big hug, and there's a great Insta post that goes out in August from, t- from r- Tokyo, they're them holding good. up their medals, but one's going to be a different color than the other, and then that's going to be the new beef. The new- <laughs> <laughs> Never ends. I mean, your, your favorite basketball player in NBA history, Joel Embiid. Oh, yeah. This he- reminds me of the... Yeah. Which is what happened, like, last week. Would this register on the NBA scale of beefs? Yeah, I mean, if... Yeah, people don't even do this. I mean, there was a little bit of Joel Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns. A little bit. There was a, <laughs> they little, fought each other. Yeah, they fought each other. But then they, he, his calling out was very, like... Yeah, explicit. Explicit and being like, all right, man, now it's, it's gone beyond, like, yeah, trash yeah. talk. This is getting, like, you want to, like, personal. I but then the, they're not doing anything personal. Like, they should do stuff personal. Like, if one, like, called each other out for, like, something, like... I mean, they're calling each other dogs. I, but the, uh, yeah, Chihuahua. I call you a dog every other yeah, week. Come that's on. True. I mean, I think we're going to get. Now, this is weird this year because Olympic trials, uh, 5,000 is first. Is it? Mm-hmm. Now, they're still separated by a bunch of events. And I asked Paul if he was going to run the, the 10 this year, and he said he was thinking about it. But his main goal is medal. I'm thinking about it means if I don't get top three, I'm running the 10. Right, but it's first. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The so 10 that's, is first, so. Oh, no, he said so five, 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 five Yeah, so five. he's thinking about it, meaning I'll tell you after I get. But that means he's at least going to have to run it, right? He's going to at least have to. Get the get the time? Try to get the standard. So, I mean, that's a. That's yeah, a, Lopez doesn't a, have to run it. A, a pre-situation? I don't, I don't know. I don't know when he would do it. I don't know when they're going to race again. But Peyton. I could see. Oh, yeah, that's right. I could see a scenario where, yeah, they go one, two or something in the, in the 5,000 at trials and then there's like a hug, like an embrace or something no but if they're one two no there won't be an embrace you don't think so no because that means one beat the other yeah well they're gonna have to the embrace is gonna be they both make it in separate events that's the only time they're embracing i think though olympic trials are different you're just so relieved to make it that your guard kind of comes oh, that's down true you don't not really like, care about winning hey we're on we're both on the team and if you're saying that there is sort of like this common understanding this common respect underlying it all yeah then i think that would be the time to show it but i i mean i like it from the perspective of, i mean it's so funny like lamong like it's crazy that we're still talking about i know dude like, i thought he was done you should bring up one of like lamong's worst years i'm you gotta find it was it yeah. like 2015 or 14 i thought that was it for him right i mean he had a there was like a year there. where it was like all right lopez you're done like hang it up and then he came back in 20 when did he start coming back hard 18 it's 18 he was good so let's go 15 so 15 he, he got six at USA's. Yeah, six at USA's didn't make. The, well, so did he? Ma- he made the thirteen team though, or no? Yes. He yeah. Made, he made so, the thirteen team in the fifteen hundred. So fifteen, he was six at USA's. What was sixteen? Sixteen didn't make the team, obviously. Yeah, sixteen he was a DNF. No, what was it? Tenth. Tenth. Yeah, so he's six tenth. He's going the wrong direction, right? Seventeen. What is he? Seventeen. Fifth. 
So he's like, all right, you're not making teams anymore. Like, 6th, 10th, 5th. And then 18. And new the young guys are coming in. And then 18 is when he started showing up. Well, he wins that 10,000. Yeah. That's when he shits, switches to the 10,000. Yeah. And, and that, was a, that yeah. was a weird, yeah, that was a weird race, though, remember. But I, I've done, like, a now, like, Lopez, his, what's his 800 PR? 145. So 145. And what's his 10K? Uh, 2704. Yeah. How many, there's no one who does that. Like that. And 332.15? Yeah. Come on, dude. No, he's got crazy range. It's insane. But, I mean, I, I just think it's funny. We're talking about a rivalry between two guys who are they're 10 years apart, right? I mean, Lopez is 35. Lopez is 35. Yeah. Chil January 1st, 1985. Chilimo's, I mean, he was like a whole, I mean, it's almost a different, like, era. Yeah. Really. Like, like in, seven in years. Yeah. Contemporaries. I mean, I would, I would still pick Chilimo in the five. Yeah. Well, I think Chilimo doesn't like Lopez fake doesn't like the performative doesn't like it's because Chalimo is not a patient runner and he hates doing a whole like wait let someone else yeah. control the race so he hates that he has to like do all the work and he he's okay with doing all the work as long as he wins yeah but when he does all the work and doesn't win he feels like he like they they took it from him because like he i feel like he thinks he earns he deserves more of a win because he's the one who yeah. Does a fart lick in the race and like tries to go and like say, Hey, come, you saw that yeah. last year. They were like, Come on, do you want to race? And well, that's where it started. Woody and Lopez were like, Nope, we're not, we're not going to well, race you. The quote was, I didn't come here to pace the Bowerman yeah. Track Club, which is what set the whole thing off. Yeah. And then, yes, but, but he's that's but, the tension, right? And that's a tension that a lot of runners have at all levels, right? Yeah, the, the person who is doing the work because they want this, they think they're making the race honest and they think they're, yeah. they think they're sort of like doing justice to the effort versus the person who's just sitting on their shoulder and then going to try to kick by. Like, that's universal. Yeah, that's just... but, like, Mo Farah was really good as, like, I will never dictate the race. Yeah. Like, I will never do that. And that takes some discipline to, yeah. like, no matter what, you will not make that right. move first. But Chalimo's, like, just itching so hard. He can't, yeah. He, he can't. has, like, that mentality of, like, no, nah, I'm going. And then, in some cases, when you're going up against someone as good as Lopez or at peak Lopez, which was happening last year, it bought, it bit him. Yeah. Well, and then, yeah, and, and you're right. It's like he wants, like, credit for, like, yeah. or at least he doesn't want it rubbed in his face when he loses because he, he's like, oh, yeah, I lost, but, like, I'm the one who got this thing going. Yeah. I'm the one who, I'm, a, I'm the one who separated everybody from the pack so you guys yeah. could probably get those qualifying spots, which they didn't, he didn't run the 5,000 yeah. in Doha anyway, so he didn't, didn't even have the standard. Didn't, neither of those guys had the standard. That's why it's so funny, this whole ridiculous... Yeah. It's kind of like LeBron James. I mean, people bag him for all of his NBA Finals losses. Yeah. But he's like, at least I'm making the NBA yeah. Finals and I'm not going out in the first round like Le like Michael Jordan did his first like 10 years of his career. What's going to be the sound... Five years. What's going to be the sound in, in Hayward in the 5,000, both these guys are in it, when Chalimo like, moves to the front with like a K to go? And, like, Lamont goes right with him. Like, everyone's just going to be like, ooh. <laughs> well, if Chalimo's smart, he shouldn't. He should not. He should not do that. Well, I wouldn't want to kick with Lopez. Chalimo can kick. I mean, 56-8, right? Yes, yes, he can kick, but I wouldn't want. I, I think he's still head and shoulders, like, in a pure time trial race. Better, yeah. He, he's better than everybody. I'd like to see him do what he did before. Just like go from the gut. yeah run thirteen oh run thirteen oh two especially at the trials where everybody is so nervous yeah so balled up with energy go from the gun and then make put doubt in everybody's head about what yeah. to do I think that would be a fascinating way to play it but you can't half it you can't half ass it you can't be like all right we're gonna go come back and that's yes. a problem yes you need to go from exactly you know mile two um, from after mile one not. A little bit. Oh, just come back and let and him, you know. that was the problem. He yeah. thought everybody else would be generous, and that's not the way it yeah. goes. He needs to do it like he did it that year, Sacramento Outdoors. Was that yeah. It was hot. Is that 14? That. I think it was 14. 14 or 15. And he just completely yeah. floored everybody. He did it one year at Indoors, too. No, it wasn't 14. He wasn't good yet at 14 yet. He didn't get good till 2016. And what year am I thinking? It so was you're, you're thinking 17. Really? In Sacramento? Yeah. Okay. Because that was when, uh, well, that's when Rupp didn't make the team. In the 10K. Yes, yes, yeah. you're right. And Sam Chalanga also was pissed. I was there in 14, that's right. I was confusing yeah. myself for Paul. Yeah, Chalanga. you do that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> similar. Uh, the other one I want to talk about, the other rivalry, or I guess not a rivalry anymore, <laughs> Houlihan. This was a rivalry for like... Six days. Six, yeah, six days. Six days. And it was a great six days. Listen, I wrote an article about it. I had a take. <laughs> I mean, I, I put question marks in my take. 
That's why I'll never be Stephen A. Smith. I didn't say it definitively, but I put question marks in my take. I remember jo- Jojo Gretchel after, uh, who actually just had a really good marathon. Yeah. Ran three, fifth, got fifth in Austin Marathon. Fifth place. Shout out, Jojo. She's ready to trials 2024. Tri- trials 2024, here we come. She's going to break three three hours at the next one and then go from who, there. Who yeah. knows what happens there. Anyway, we were watching Milrose together, and after Milrose, she was like, really like, I told, because she was predicting that El Priori was, like, kind of going to have a breakout year. Yeah, yeah. And she was, like, proven 100% right. She's, like, boom, dunking. And while she was dunking her basketball on (laughs) me, like, not on me, but, like, on just being proud that you're right, I was, like, Shelby's going to beat her. And she was kind of, like, I don't know, man. Like, 416 is good. It is. And I was, like, but Shelby's even better. And then took six days later for Shelby just to break Ellie. Why? What? Was Ellie Ellie at Milrose what we're going to see from her, or is it what we saw from USA's? Yeah. I, mean, I think I, it's more what we saw at USA's. I think it's, well, I think it's closer to that right now, but, but, I mean, it's still, it's still a weird sort of situation. You have yeah. a, a season that's tiny. She raced, I mean, the small sample size is tiny. She raced New Balance. Indoors, she raced Milrose, and then she raced a 3,000. So we're basing this off all of three races. Uh, is she going to beat Shelby Houlihan this year? I think the answer is no. I think that's un- unequivocally no. I think that was answered in this race. Yeah. Is she going to make another team again? I would bet her on her. Yeah, five, in the five I can see for that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But we're, we're putting a more expectation on her now. That's the thing. We're not like, oh, you made the team. Now we're like, can you beat the best? You know? Right. And that's like a credit to how well she ran at Milrose. Yeah. Because it wasn't just she won Milrose. It's just she ran 416 at Milrose, yeah. and she beat... Coco, Riki, and GDS all in that same race. It's a lot of nicknames. Yeah. Well, Riki's a last name. GDS, <laughs> Gabrielle, Debut, Stafford. I don't know. I mean, that's... that's I never really, heard the GDS. That's a... I may, yeah, I just started You, ma- you made that, that up? I can, can, our friends in Canada do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that was still a phenomenal race, and that stands alone, but it's a whole other level. And I said... This is what I said in the preview, if I can backtrack and, and get my take correctly here. I, she's a whole other level up. Like, then Houlihan is a level up. Right, and then there's another. If you're talking about the 1500, there's the women I just mentioned, right, in one group. Then there's like the Houlihan, Faith Kipigon tier, and then there's Safan Hassan. Yeah. Right now, that's like what the what the levels are in the 1500. So she beat all those other women in one, but isn't isn't to Houlihan's level yet. Well, I was surprised. I thought she'd at least. I thought she'd beat Quigley and Schweizer. Like I thought she'd be there. And yeah, be but more I think the race. I think she got. Bro- I think. I think if. Shelby wasn't in that race, L probably would have won the race. Oh, that's interesting. I think Shelby's presence of, like, growing that gap, eventually you're kind of like, you're broke. You're just like, all right. Yeah. Uh, you you, you kind of... She's fun to watch. It's, it, it's, it's just hard to fight for fourth or third than it is to fight for first. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. a different mental... Well, you knew watching that with, like... Yeah, like you're like, okay. Go, you're like, okay, I know how this is going to go. Is, yeah. She looked good. Well, one thing I was thinking about, if Shelby was in the Mil- Millrose race... What does she run? Yeah, that's... I mean, you'd think faster than 416. Now, yeah, right? right? You'd think she would just be right there, and she'd kick away, and then yeah. and then that move wouldn't even be made. Yeah, I mean... What do you think it is? Four... Maybe 415? Second? Yeah, that's... Not 414.9? Oh. Well, I mean, she's... 415 is still better than 416. Yeah. I don't... I, yeah, I don't... I mean... Clearly, she's better. Now... I don't know, she had to travel across the country and did all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but Shelby's only raced in one meet this year too. It's not like Shelby's exactly race sharp. They just came down from altitude. They've won they've run one meet when she ran a mile and an eight hundred and that was it. So she's just I mean, what did she close in in the in the fifteen hundred? I mean it was nuts too. Yeah. Do you think that what do you think Shelby's gonna do at USA's? Or she's at, gonna at do, Olympics. What uh, what's she say she's doing? Well she's gonna do both at trials, but they can't double it. They can't double in the Olympics. I what's first her, at the trials? Uh, 15. 15? 15. So she's going to do both, but she's only going to run one? Yes. And which one she's going to run? I'm guessing it's the 15. I didn't, I didn't, she didn't say that part yet, but. You think she's better at that? I said, does it piss you off that they don't let you do the double? And she's like, yeah. She's like, they, they help Alice and Felix do the double? Well, I said they have a 10 day track. This is a pet peeve of mine. They have a 10 day track meet. You got to figure out how to make sequential doubles possible. Yeah. 15, 10, don't worry about that. Yeah. If, if it's Safan Hassan comes along once every blue moon, yeah. whatever, she can figure it out. But a 15, 5, a 5, 10, a 1, 2, a 2, 4, I mean, you can take out a five, 4, 8 because nobody's going to do that, but I mean, except, except for I mean, your boy, I mean, my boy, my career. Uh, 
to get back to your question, she didn't. Yeah, she's gonna run them both. I was just surprised she even committed that much. Now it's early, so they can always go back on it. But usually they're just like, well, we'll wait and see, and we'll talk. And now, if you're, if you're Shelby and you are uh, doing both, you're yeah. mo- very likely to get top three on both. What do you think the the price is for her to pull out of the event for the fourth place finisher in the fifteen or the five k? Like what? What's this? What's asking price of like? Uh, you want me to scratch the fifteen for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And run the five. Like they're gonna bid. The two fourth place finishers are gonna okay. have to <laughs> highest bidder to Shelby for her to scratch one. I mean, I guess it depends who it is, but you got. I, I would go at least six figures. I I dip into the savings. For I that. mean, it's worth it, right? You yeah. get to go to the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you think sponsor would pay for it? Does she take it? Like. Does she charge interest? Like, can I make a payment plan on this? Because it's going to be, a, it's going to require a lot. I do you see any reason why she would run the five and not the fifteen? The I think it's easier to win a five k than it is to win a fifteen. No, oh, I think yeah, I think the opposite. I think the, I think she could win the fifteen because I don't know if Safan Hassan doesn't run the fifteen. I think Safan Hassan's going to run the five and ten in the Olympics because she's going to. I don't think she can do the fifteen and ten again. I think she'll do the five and the ten, and then the fifteen's wide open, and I think Shelby's going to favorite. Yeah. I just think that. When you have five thousand meters, more things can. Uh, it's 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 not about the. Well, you're also going against milliseconds, four, but you're also going against like fourteen twenty women, right? Like yeah, but it, they're not running fourteen. They're not going to run fourteen twenty. But they'll. They've made it pretty honest. I mean, last year was a weird year because everybody was running honest races yeah. in Doha, but it just separates it more. Fifteen hundred. If the race goes fast, she can run with them because she's run three fifty four. If the race goes slow, it's even better. Like she's got both sides of it. Yeah covered i mean the 15 is still tough right you got the women i just mentioned with all the nicknames i mean coco is probably around the five and not them and then you got someone like kippy gone in there uh, okay maybe it's different because the women run a 5k very differently from the men they actually run it honest yeah, yeah. so maybe that maybe you're right there because i i would say you have a better shot at winning a men's 5k than you do at winning the men's 15 Currently, yes, because Timothy Sherry <laughs> runs it like a but you, Paul Chalimo. You so, know, yeah. but, like, I just feel like the, you know, you just see, like, everyone's in it with 200 meters to go. Yeah. And it's just all about positioning, and it's luck. I mean, everyone is running the same last 400. It's a difference of point one and point two. You the 5 or the 15? No, in the 15. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, like yeah. You could, just because you ran point one second slower than someone else in a 15 doesn't mean you were, like, that much worse than that person. Yeah, I think... It'll Whereas in a 5K, it's going to be like a second difference. Yeah. yeah. Doha was weird because all of them were honest. 15. Men's 5, men's five they fooled around a little bit, but that got going. I mean, that was 13 flat, right? And the 10,000 uh, was pretty honest. And do you think the air conditioning had anything to do with yes, Doha? Yes, that was my theory. I, can't, I was interviewing people after that meet or after the, their races because like someone like Schweizer, right? Yeah. PR'd in back-to-back 5Ks. She went sub-15, and then she went 14.45 in the final. Um, so I was like, that is crazy. Like, when's the last time yeah. someone PRs twice within the, within the context of a championship? At the end of a season. In the 5,000. And then when I was asking people, people were like, athletes, they are saying, oh, it's a championship meet. And I was like, this is abnormal for a championship meet. Championship meets go slower than regular meets, not faster. And I think it was because of the, the completely controlled climate. And there's an indoor flat track, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but 400 meters. So yeah. You don't need to do the conversion. And the presence of crazy front runners. Hassan in the 15 and the 10. Cherry in the 15. Uh, I mean, Chep the guy. Yeah. I mean, he's obviously legit because he just ran 1251 on the roads. <laughs> so, like, you had these big, like, front runners in yeah. there. And their their forte was front running, right? Like, Safan Hassan. So they pulled out, they string it out, and... Yeah, it was crazy to watch because yeah. I kept thinking, well, they're going to slow down eventually, but it just never happened. I mean, then, then the women's five with Obiri coming back after Hassan snatched her soul in the 10,000. Like, she was, she would be benefiting from a faster race, not a slow race. But, yeah, no AC in Tokyo, so I don't know what that's going to what that's gonna look like. Um, it was cool. Like, it was a cool change of pace because we're used to exactly what you said. Everybody yeah. jogging around and then running a fast, either last mile in the 5K or, like, a last a fast, like, 800 so there was like it was like a whole new dimension, kind of. Um, Did any of the uh, runners, when you were talking to them, act like uh, the altitude was an issue with uh, the championship races? No, no, because that's where NCAs is, and I was wondering if you think that's going to be like a, a factor. Hopple said Lincoln asked Hopple. Lincoln, by the way, has interviewed Bryce Hopple I think fifteen times in yes, the last two years. We we counted it. He's on the Hopple beat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he said he he felt it like he'll feel it like a little bit like when he warms up and stuff. But like as for the race itself, like the eight hundred people definitely don't yeah. talk about it. 
I think uh, it's unquestionably a factor once you get above that distance. Just the science tells us that. Yeah. But no one, no one mentioned it really. I mean, they had all been training at altitude. That's too, true. So I don't. Because I'm talking. Went fast, right? I mean, those the women, the women's three K was fast. Yeah. Uh, the women's five fifteen hundred was pretty fast too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think I think it was a, a combination. The of men's five K. The men's 3K converted to, like, a 7.48. Yeah. So it wasn't that fast. Right. So in terms of NCAAs, uh, I, I, you think Colorado, New Mexico, NAU are yeah. going to be a good spot, and BYU, but you'd think that those people would be in a good yeah. spot anyway in the distance races. So. But, like, do you think someone like Edwin Kerr got, is g- it's going to, or, like, a Peter Sufer. Yeah. Or, like, uh, you know, uh, Katie Izzo. Yeah. Like, these people who are good... But they're going up in altitude and right. a mountain school. I mean, I looked at la- when was that last time? Albert- Twenty fourteen. Yeah, I mean, the DMR was for the women. It was like between Arkansas and Stanford. There was no yeah. a- altitude at play in most of those races. But it's sort of weird. It's like it's not going to make the worst runner be- beat the best runner because just because it's altitude. So you have to factor that into right. But like, it's but Chad it will Rex make a win. yeah. But it will make will it make a good runner be- like a person Less. who could get third. All of a sudden, they're getting. Yeah, tenth. yeah, because no, I like sh- I can't handle this. I don't. I I mean, I would say if you had two equal runners, right? Like if you have a Klecker versus Kurgot, and and we're doing this like pregame NFL style where you have yeah. the person in the check boxes next to like their strengths and weaknesses. Like the fact that it's at altitude, I yeah. think, is a, a plus for for Klecker for sure. I mean, there's what's aims at? It's not at five thousand feet. No, I think I measured it the other day. It was a little <laughs> took, little under. Took a couple rulers. What do you? How what, do they measure altitude? Like, like, how do we do that? Like, how do they know where to start from? You start from sea level. It's okay, so how do you know where sea level is in the middle of the country? This is a big question. But no, this is a legit serious question. How do you do that? I mean, I think that you have, like, satellites and stuff. Satellites? To know where We're going to trust that technology? Yeah. It's like, oh, they, they can figure it out? Are you saying that Albuquerque's not actually at 5,000 feet? No, I'm feet? Just, I think it's all just... This is a Kyrie Irving take yeah, here. Albuquerque ain't real, man. I'm an Al- <laughs> I'm I'm altitude truther. Are dinosaurs real? Are we going to get into that? Uh, no, but that's actually a good question. How do they measure it? I'm going to Google this later. I mean, we could do... Yeah, we, we don't need to Google it now, but it does kind of seem weird out. We know to the exact foot yes. how high... And, like, where are they measuring it from? Well, that's, yes. So you're not measuuring it. If I go up a hill, it's all of a sudden. Yeah, right. You're, I think they're probably measuring it, like, to the airport or some, like, weather to, center. To the airport. <laughs> well, the airport, there's a lot of, like, weather centers usually near the airport. So that's, that's why I said the airport. But uh, you're right. Yeah, if, if it's on a hill or something, it's a little, obviously, different. Because then matter, if you're right? smart, you go to a, a city where it has high altitude, but then you put the track at the lowest part of the city, mm. and then you get that conversion, and it's a fake conversion. I can't believe I... University hasn't hired you yet to, right. to game the system. We should dig a, dig a giant hole in NAU. We make it sea level, literally. They take an elevator down to the bottom of the track. Yeah. And then they get the altitude conversion. You were, Let me read this headline. Speaking of NAU, you're big on NAU. Oh, here it is right yeah. here. Don't look now that NAU Lumberjacks could win NCAA indoors. Now, a cynic might say, hey, Gordon, you spent three months with NAU. Did you drink the Kool Aid? No, I don't think I drank the Kool Aid. Did... You sure? I, I mean, you could say I was drinking Kool-Aid in December when it, n- nothing had been, like, proven yet. Okay. But they have 10 entries. I looked into it. The last team to have so taken away their two-mile entries, they have currently three in the 3K, which is top three seeds, and five in the 5K. So it's eight in the 3K and 5K combined. Only one team has ever gotten that many. Okay. And it was Oregon in 2015, I think. Mm-hmm. With the Will Gohegan, Chez, Jenkins, so the year they scored like Stinson. This year they scored like 80 points. Yeah. Uh, that but was a mostly distance team too, right? That was most distance team. They scored like 50 points in distance because they also had a DMR and they had the mile. Yeah. Uh, so it's not normal. Like, And they're doing – like I know we all talk – like I, I'll admit last year I was all in on the Wisconsin being able to pull it off. And New Mexico women. And New Mexico women. New Mexico women didn't do what I thought. New Mexico women almost had a shot at it. Uh, outdoor. Same with BYU men outdoor because they had a lot of steep. Yeah, uh, but they you, were close. You didn't buy that. I was in on that one. Yeah, but uh, Wisconsin getting fourth at least proved in theory that I was, I, I was on to something last year. Yeah, my okay. And it was a lot harder. I looking back on it, thinking Oliver Hor is gonna win the mile, be top two in the DMR, and then also like top five in the three K is a little stupid. Because only <laughs> someone like Cesarek can do that. And I just like, so Ches did it, so yeah. Oliver Horgan do it. Yeah, his hamstrings are still recovering. Yeah. But the difference, so that team still got fourth, which is 
Well, on a distance team, that's impressive. Yeah, but hold on, let me let me. I get what you're saying. Let me pause you there for a second, though. It's indoor, though. Like everybody has like an event group they're kind of focused on. Yeah. So to win, yes, that's a big deal. Oh, that, or that's a cool story. Do you think fourth isn't that big? Of a deal? I don't think it's that big of a deal. But distance programs never get fourth. Except for Oregon's oh, the outlier, Oregon. but well, that was like the Cheserec life. That was like... Yeah, I just think... It's better. It's especially more, this year, it's just so dependent on what other teams do, right? And you're saying 27 points can get fourth this year, right? Or 30 points can get fourth this year. Yeah, I'm saying 37 will win it. It's Yeah, okay, so that's what I'm saying. It's more an issue of like what other teams are doing in these other events, not just because yeah, it's well, proxy Yeah, well, you got to take event. I mean, we gave a Bowerman Award to... Uh, what's what's his name? The Arkansas kid? Jerry Lawson. Jerry Lawson, because he won the one, two, and long jump, but no one wants to talk about that. Andre DeGrasse went pro, Trayvon Bramel went pro, Christian Coleman wasn't good yet, and the best LSU guy pulled his hamstring in the prelims. Well, there were no other good candidates. Oh, someone, <laughs> Cheserak, who freaking won like eight titles that year? People don't know this. Gordon is the biggest Ches for Bowerman. Jerry Lawson is the I just, I biggest, just, uh, like, talking sh- about Aaron Gordon getting st- uh, getting Stop screwed it. over in the dunk contest. Chez, Chez getting screwed over in Bowerman is the worse <laughs> atrocity to society. I just want to know how long you're going to talk about it. Anyway, I got you off on a tangent. Okay. How many of these guys are actually going to make the meet, though, and running? Like, is Ryan They're all going to make it. And Ryan Raff's 1340 going to sh- hold up? I think so. Okay. I mean, because I'm i looking into it. When is someone going to run a fast 5K? It's just next this weekend and conference weekend. You can think someone like Gilbert Boyd is someone on the outside looking in, but they're not going to run a fast 5K at SECs. Okay. So I looked into it. I think it's going to get in. I think it might get pushed to 16th. There's a chance it gets to 17th, but Ryan Raff isn't scoring anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Mm. You're counting them out. I'm not counting Bottom them out. Bottom scoring. I do it. They ha- I don't, of those five 5K guys, I think two of them will score, Day and Grijalva. Yeah. I think all three of their 3K guys will score, and I think Beamish and maybe Theo gets eighth in the mile. 37 points, baby. What? You can't, you can't you see just, a team put up you just text one, two, and... About. Them going one two three in the three k. They're not going to go one two three in the three k. I'm not thinking. What did I tell you when I when you said they're going to go one two three in the three k? What did I say I would do? You would walk home from Albuquerque. Yes. But I'd ask you if NAU won the meet, would you walk home from Albuquerque? You said no, meaning you think they could win because the whole field this year is really split. And and there's no no, no, yeah, there's no key. I'm just saying, how great of a story would be NAU? Doesn't win NCAA cross. You said the last. And one. then literally three months later, they win a national title in indoor track. That would be like the most ridiculous thing ever. I'm putting the line at 21.5. I told you this before. I'm sticking with my 21.5 points. They're going to get way more than 21.5 points. Okay. That's they have 10 guys. Okay. You got to get top eight to score. Time trials are different than championships. Look. Yeah, but. Jeff Grijalva winning the 3,000, right? Okay. You think he's going to beat Klecker and Kurgat? Yes. Think, really? You actually believe that? You're just saying this for the take. I th- what what do I say? What do I have the order? One, two, What's it? Th- no, one, no, two, three K. Oh, no, oh, what oh. do I have? You have Grijalva, Nagus, Klecker, and Kurgot. I mean, if if Kurgot gets fourth, Kurgot's not that good in a three K, man. He's good in the three K. He's fine. He ran. He he got He's smoked bad. at Milrose. He's fine. He's, he lost like by a second to Klecker. You know he lost by lost, like two seconds to you know Klecker. Else, who, you know who else lost? In a Melrose three K in college, a little guy by the name of Morgan McDonald, and then what happened? Yeah, but Morgan also ran like seven forty two in that loss. I think Klecker and Kurgat are going to go one two in the three K in the three K. I think Nagus, if he runs, we don't know what Nagus is doing. Do we? I mean, he probably do DMR three K. Yeah, do DMR three K. Yeah, I think he's legit. I don't know. Some for, dude. What's what's Grahalva's highest NCAA finish individually? I don't know. Yeah. What? But what? What the? Yeah, Nagus, it's one. Collector, it's two. Kurgot, it's one. Yeah, but like... There's no disrespect to Grijalva. This is a very tough task for him, and you're just plopping him in there number but one. But what, what... Okay, what does this 743 mean, then? It means he ran 743, but we've we've been down this road before. But what does it mean? The Boston track is short. No. Okay. <laughs> but does, what does it mean? Does it mean he'll get, what, fifth? Nothing. It doesn't even... It doesn't guarantee he's going to score. I mean, he has to do it So what do you say? A 743 guy is not going to score at NCAA? It's possible. You'd That's rather the, take... The th- isn't the 3K nuts Kyle this year? Mao? Mao? Kyle Mao? Big 10 guy. Love me some Kyle Mao. But like I, I, it's historically deep year this year, right? In the 3K, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, we don't know. Anything could happen. Yeah. But I just don't think he can win. I don't think him winning is one of the possibilities. But I could also All argue Klecker. I could say the phrase, Klecker's not a winner. He's never won anything. You, you, could, you could say that. You know? Right. I could say, you could say, just But you could say he gets second. Yeah, but uh, cool. Getting, that's not he, winning. Right, but that's still keeping Grijalva from getting points. It's still pushing everybody down. That 3K, I mean, so you have one, five, six, right? So how many points is that? 17. 17. 
Yeah, I mean, to get 17 in this year's 3K, if they do it. But here's the thing. I'm being, like, I'm not, like, being, like, if they get like, I'm saying they're going 3-4 in a 5K. Like, I'm admitting that Kurgott and Klecker are good. See, you're, you're, you're high on them in all the wrong spots. You should put Day number one in the 5K. No. Because I would. Because you can't kick, like, Kurgott and Klecker. We lost our light, I think. That's lost it. our light. It's okay. Uh, I think the Day winning the 5K is a lot higher probability than Grijalva winning the 3K. Disagree. I think Kurgai and Klecker are so much better in the 5K than they are in the 3K. Right, but Day is so much better in the 5K than Grimaldi yeah. is in the 3K. Either way, uh, and you don't have Beamish winning. You can give you guys guys some credit, man. Put Beamish number one. But the thing is, if I have them winning everything, they'd be like, oh, you think they're going to win everything? The yeah. fact, but uh, it's, it also shows that they have room for improvement. I think you, yeah, that's true. So, like, if Grijalva doesn't win a 3K, then Beamish can win the mile. Yeah. And that makes up for it. Yeah. Uh, look, if they do it, if they go 1, 2, 3 in the 3K... They're not going to go 1, 2, 3 in the 3K. If they do, they should get the cross-country title retroactively. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. Call up Ed Eystone and say, listen... I'm just saying they can score 37 points with only winning one individual event. That's pretty good. 35 yeah. points getting winning no individual yeah, events. Yeah, again, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. But You also didn't think that, like... That was Abdi Hamid Nur was going to run thirteen thirty nine. I did not. Did he run it, or was that a conversion? It's conversion. Okay. Well, <laughs> I look. Love me some Abdi Hamid Nur. Was awesome in that thing. So but we'll, you'd have to run the time. To what would it. need to happen after day one at NCAs for you to be on the NAU might win it train? Well, I think it's that's what I'm saying. This isn't really about NAU. It's about the other teams yes. too, right? So you have to hope other teams fall apart. And or spread out the points. Right, that's what exactly. So that's what I'm saying. This is so much different than cross country. It's not about you necessarily being great. It's about what the other teams do as well in these other events. Right? We're having like a Georgia-Oregon situation here where you have a field event team versus another team. Here. Not necessarily, though. They do control their own destiny because if all 10 of their guys just sweep everything they well, run. Right, 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 right. Okay, but you have a team like... Florida State, which is going to have two awesome hurdlers. They're going to have jumpers. They're going to have sprinters, right? Uh, you have a team like LSU that also has hurdlers. Like, they're going head-to-head -head against... And they're going to break it up. Right. Exactly. Spread it out. So, uh, what do they need to have after day one? I mean... So, from the 5K. Basically, well, they're going to need to get at least Beamish through in the mile. He's going to need to look pretty good. Yeah. They're going to need to have, I would say... Okay, here is... 15 points from the 5K? 15? 15 from the 5K, I would say. Okay. What well, if they come out of the 5K with with uh, 12 points and they qualified both guys in the mile? Could, then they could maybe get my over-under of 21.5, yeah. With two in a mile and three in 3K with 12 points yeah. in the bank. But look, this is what you're forgetting about last year. What am I year. forgetting? Is this whole thing is done over a 24-hour time frame. It is really hard to double. And so I agree. Points, that's why points in the five k don't necessarily translate to that. Like that's day, why I don't think Bemis will do well in the three k because he's coming off a mile. Right. And day day could win the five k, and you're gonna get all excited. And then he could get twelfth in the three. Yeah. Look what Monson did last that's year. That's true. So this if this meet was spread out over three days, I think it would help. But I could say that also. Klecker and Kurga could go one two in the five k, and then go fifteen sixteenth in the three k. Yes. And if they go fifteen sixteenth in the three k, again, I will walk, walk home from okay. Albuquerque. I need to come up with a list of things that will make you walk home <laughs> yeah. from Albuquerque. Yes. Yeah. And just like put it on the list. Put them on and see if one that's of them. That's how confident. That's how confident I am about this. Uh, okay. Is the thinking that a distance teams never done that well in this meet relative to like pure sprint teams? Is that it's such a short meet? Is that the idea? Because that would make sense to me. Less time to recover, right? No. I mean, distance teams don't do well because there's not enough events. Well, that would also be... There's no... Re I mean, there's one... Re but, like... There's no steeple and there's no... But even then, it's hard to do it out outdoor either. It, the problem is that, like, All the jumpers day. and sprinters kind of overlap. Right. So, yeah. it double. Like, but don't you think part of it is the fact that the thing's over in, like, 28 hours? I mean, it's just, like, tough to, like... Yes, it's two days, but it's, like... Friday evening and Saturday evening, and you're trying to run a 5K and a 3K or a DMR and a 3K. But it's like doing a prelim and a round. Think about it that way. I mean... Yeah, but I'm saying when you're trying to get people to, to, to do multiple events, yeah. it's like you don't get as much bang for your buck. Like you can run a guy in the, in the 200, the 400, the 4x4 four four over two days and get a lot out of that guy or that woman. I mean, that's a lot of... Right, but yeah. right. isn't that what Obi tried to do last year? Yeah, and he died. Yeah. But I'm saying you could... It's possible. I mean, look at Grant. And he's an exception because he's going to holiday, but long jump, 60, 
60 hurdles, 4x4, four four, right? No, they pulled him for the 4x4 four four last yeah. year, didn't they? Okay, either way. They got they got three events out of him. Um, the more combinations for which you can do three events. Distance, it's like you're choosing your death. It's just like, how do you want to do it, I think. Um, is there anything going on the women's side of things, or is it just USC, USC, USC? Uh, no, other teams are doing good. USC's not dominating as much, I feel. They haven't dropped the big marks yet. Yeah. But I think that could... Maybe it's coming later. They're waiting for MPSF. Yeah, let's go, go all in on MPSF. Yeah. Can you name what MPSF stands for? Mountain Pacific Sports Federation. That's a good job. To the Dempsey. Uh, well, they ran a Tiger Paw, right? Yeah. Okay. Tiger Paw was... I looked at the results. It wasn't that impressive. One thing I thought was weird is Quincy Hall. Mm-hmm. This guy who, you know, should have almost went pro last year. Yeah. Because he was dominating the 400 hurdles. He didn't run. He got, like, third in his heat. Uh, he ran, like, 46 seconds. Another Two two really good 400-meter guys are not running well. Trevor Stewart and Quincy Hall. Okay. And I don't know why. Uh, speaking of third at the Tiger Paw, men's 800. Oh, dude. Devin Dixon doesn't have a time yet. Yeah. Devin Dixon, a guy who literally is not... His like fastest one, time this year is 152 or something. Why like that. did they run 150 at Tiger Paw? Did it go out slow? Did you see that? I'm game? guessing it went out slow. I mean, you don't do that. But, like, when is Devin Dixon going to run his time? SECs? I guess so. I mean, but... It's a last chance. Yeah. Doing the prelims at SECs. Yeah, that's what we'll probably do. Leave I mean, he, I mean, he just needs to run what's, 147 what's, and he'll be it, fine. He's at 147. But, like, it is kind of scary that the best 800-meter run in the country with two weeks left to qualify has yet to hit a time. Yeah. In that race, Carlton Orange beat him and Isaiah Jewett. Yeah. Right? I mean, two good guys. Two guys that are NCAA finalists. But this was supposed to be Dixon's year. After, yeah. You know, and he hop, hasn't. Hopple graduated. I mean, he ran a fast 600. So mm-hmm. he just hasn't. He's only run two races, 600 and 800. And he oh, did, that's it? Okay. He ran a fast 600, and then he lost his sit and kick in an 800. And he's on four by fours. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I wonder. What, that'll, be, that'll be shocking if he doesn't make it. Mm-hmm. That opens it way, way, way. Wide open for. I feel like the 800 is the only one that he's like the biggest favorite. Yeah. In any other event. The whole the whole meet is kind of be like who's gonna win the men's 400. I don't even know. Yeah. Texas yeah. maybe. The, Jones, uh, Jones. Jones. Yeah, could be. What about? I know you hate ranking DMRs. I do hate ranking DMRs. So what, what are your what are your women's DMRs? The stupidest of that. So what are your women's DMR rankings? I don't know. Whoever th- you don't. First of all, you don't know who's gonna run, mm-hmm. right? Is Whitney Orton gonna run? Maybe. In the, I don't know. Maybe. maybe. That's why. I'll, that's one thing that's really frustrating. I think people like Whitney Orton and Danny Jones. You're you're not running the three k mile and the DM- and the five k. Like that's not happening. Yeah. So tell us what you're running. Why yeah. why run qualifying times in all three? Get your, well, for the five kers, it's the Olympic trials. Yeah, so. but she didn't get the five k. Danny didn't. It's the Olympic standard? No. Trials. Oh, the trials. trials. That's the thing. Oh. You get the trials standard just because you can put it in your back, back pocket, I think. Uh, I would I would guess that, well, Jones isn't going to run the DMR, I don't think, because they don't have a team. Yeah. Right? Or but the, is Jones going to run the mile or the 5K? I think she's going to run the mile. And I think... What's Orton going to run? I think Orton would run the DMR. Okay. So Orton's not going to run the 5K or the mile? I don't think so. Okay. That's my guess. I, I, that's my guess. I, I mean, I have so many options here, but wouldn't you? So that's, here's the thing with pr- the three K is gonna be the race of death for the women. That's gonna be nuts, right? Yeah. Orton, Kalati, Monson, Jones. Jones doesn't have a time yet, right? Should I guess MPSF should get it. Jones, uh, Izzo, like oh, those five. Man, yeah. if Warner wasn't redshirting, <sighs> that'd be good. And if Alio didn't go pro, and if. <laughs> <laughs> this happened. Jerry and Lawson won, won yeah, that Bowerman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but I, I just... Aaron Gordon dunked over time. One thing that's just really frustrating when we're trying to, like, think about... Like, when you rank you your mile know. rankings... You want to know, yeah. It's, and it happens in the pro field, too. Like, we don't really know, like... Yeah. When you're trying to rank the 10K rankings, like, who act, is Do you rank Chalimo in the 10K? Yeah. Oh, of course. But... Well, who... So... But who's in the mix? Like, you could... you could Can't you determine at least who's in the mix in the in the women's... And men's DMRs right now, or no? Yeah, I mean, it's basically the top milers. That's, what, that's how Wait, it works. Is Wisconsin going to run out? No. Okay. Top milers, basically, the way I look at it is you look at the mile rankings and you see who have two people. Okay, but... Who has, who has two people... I think the men's... I mean, I think it's going to be Notre Dame again, right? Yeah, Mo- Notre Dame, though, it's kind of a little weaker. I mean, they still have the goose, but... Oh, I mean, Oregon just set the record. Oregon set the record, but, like... Is Cooper Tier going to run? Is he going to run the 5K instead? 
I'm Oregon not, is not going to win NCAA DMR. Like, I know that for a fact. I'm looking at just because they're going to spread the guys out. Well, it's just like the... You, you need, you're saying you need, like, a pure miler. You need, you need to have the... You need James, to have... James, that's pretty good. Um, Ch- so you're saying... It's basically coming down to Notre Dame and Oregon, though, because I'm looking at these rankings, and there's, like, unless NAU runs a DMR, but then you can't put, no. you can't blow beam But, like, uh, this is going to be, like, you know, like, Phil Nova will show up. They just had another guy run 358. Did Col- has Calmer run yet this year? Uh, Calmer hasn't, but another guy did. Okay. Uh, there will be, like, Stanford will show up, maybe, it, it and put Radcliffe more, on egg. It just seems more open. Yeah. Women's side, if Colorado doesn't run. It's BYU and Stanford. BYU, Stanford. That's mainly. It's BYU, Stanford, and Arkansas. Yeah, but as Gregory hasn't run yet. Yeah, they have they have Villon, and then I, I mean Izzo's gonna have to run five and ten though, right? So they just have Villon in there. Yeah. So I think it might just be BYU, BYU, Stanford. Yeah. Yeah, it's open. I think both of them are open. Yeah. Because I mean, like last year you had Hull there for Oregon, and you're like, okay. I just don't like the race because the first three legs don't matter. Yeah. No, I get it. And I know you don't like doing picks. That's why I wanted you to do your picks. Well, your I just races. feel like they should do a four by eight instead, because then all four legs matter. Do they? Or would they all just jog around and then like give the baton to like Andrew Weeding, and he'd just be like, "I'm gonna kill everybody." But would it be more fun a four by eight? Uh, are you saying just because the natural instinct of an eight hundred runner is just to like go for it, as opposed to like a miler is gonna like play games? Yeah, I I'm, I think I'm with you on that one. Or you change the DMR order where the mile is the first leg. And just like you get some like five thirty splits for people trying to rest their miler. <laughs> what do you you just go descending order or do you end it with like the you end it with the eight? Right? You end it with the eight. So the you eight, go yeah. you go mile, four hundred, twelve hundred, eight hundred. Yeah. Do you know who's got to be just like a confused person in general? Is like if the four hundred leg on a DMR. Well, like, I was that in college. We, did you ever like just question your purpose on the team and in life? No, you took advantage of your purpose because you you got to be like you pretended like you mattered. Yeah. And you know you didn't. But you f- tell yourself that you're important. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, we get we tell ourselves we're important when we get a retweet on a tweet. You tell yourself you're important when your miler kicks down the other guy. You'd be like, yeah, I did that. How you're like, no, you didn't. You ran 49 <laughs> seconds, all right? How often did you have, like, your cool down already done before the race was over? Uh, off, yeah. And you had your sweats already on? Yeah. Man, you were on the infield? Yeah, you're, sitting, yeah, you're like, oh, they're, on, they're like the second half of the mile now. Okay, I can watch it. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like... Well, there's no point in that leg. Literally that's no, what I'm saying. No right? position changes. Right. The right. times stay the same. Yeah. That's why I'm wondering. It's like, do you even really need... You just, like, that? skip. You know, it's... It's been rarely decided. But if you put it last, I feel like at least there'd be, like, some pressure on it. Like, if you did literally went descending order tw- 16, 12, 8, 4. What if they did... Have they ever done this? Like, eight people running in a relay. So instead of 4x4, four four, you do 8x4. To show who really has the depth. Just keep going. Just keep going until. <laughs> What's you run out of people? Yeah, you go. Then you have to lift the scholarship restrictions at that point. Yeah. No, you do. You do a decathlon relay, so it's ten legs, yeah. and they just do it in a sequential order. And like, so someone quickly throws mm-hmm. a javelin, yeah, and then wherever they are in the length of the javelin, that's where the next leg starts. Yeah. So then they jump along, and you're getting farther and farther down. And the last person, you know. Yeah. What if you did like a 12, 4, 12, 4. 12, 4, 12, 4. It's like you're leaning more on your your sprinters at that point. So. Yeah. I mean, I guess everybody would still just jog. The, the horns still, like, wouldn't matter, right? Or, like, 8, 4, 8, 4, something like I mean, that. I always think of the experiment. What if you had four people and you gave them a distance and you say, divide up however oh, you want. Oh, however you want to. Yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. The, the strategy would be really fun. But would the strategy end up just being everyone runs equal amount? Like a 4 by 4? Yeah. You're saying four people and they can divide up the mile relay. How they want. Well... I don't think so because I think did you, would you would you have to declare ahead of time or can you just pop onto the track whenever? Pop on the track. There's no there's no exchange zone. So that would be cool because then track coaches would transform from observers on the outside who are more just like overseeing and coordinating yeah. to basketball Booking. coaches. Book. So they become a basketball coach. Yeah. Because they'd be like, now, 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 no, now, no, now, no, now, no, no, yeah, go yeah. get the get the lead, get the yeah, lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. He's yeah. he, like that person's dying. Hey, like, don't hand the baton until the other guy passes you. Yeah, and then change it. Well, then they'd be staying on. And yeah. So you'd have to figure it out. Okay, is my guy? Yeah. Or, or woman. Be easy to do it, like on an indoor track. Yeah. Because then it's less. You don't have to run all the way. You can. Yeah. Get them. But then yeah, like the coach would be looking at their form and stuff and like. Okay, okay this guy's like a, oh they got a forty three second guy now so. Yeah. Let's go. Let's or go. or can we get can we get fifty more meters out of this person? Yeah. Um, so the last guy 
only has to run a 400, or do I need to pull this guy now and then I need to make him run a 450? 50. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you also change it based on the race yeah. because you're like, oh, we can afford to yeah. extend as long. All right, it'd be, basically it would be like, don't hand the baton until the guy passes you, and then you're like, yeah. Yeah, but maybe you have a guy or a person who's good, like from the front, and they, they don't want to have to come come on, right? I mean, like you'd have to do it based on their personnel, and I think track coaches would be like having to, to actually really devise a strategy and not just be like, all right, this is what we're doing, go. Yeah. I think it would be so much more fun. I like it. It's a good idea. All right. That's it. First That's edition. it. First podcast in the books. Good job, Gordon. So what are we doing next? Are we talking tomorrow? Tomorrow we're talking. Not sure what. So hopefully something happens in the track world. Maybe we'll dive into this Joshua Chepta guy, 1251, 5K. Got people outraged because, listen, what about the history and tradition of the road 5K where they literally wiped all the records starting last year? I have a lot of thoughts on that. <laughs> Horrible takes out there I've been seeing. Uh, but that's it for the first episode. Uh, check us out. You can subscribe on iTunes as well. and Or watch it on the site. Yeah, watch it on the site. Lincoln might be here at some point. We promise the light won't die mid-recording. Actually, I don't want to make that promise. Don't make that promise. It might. We'll talk to you guys next time.